Welcome to putting up a Christmas tree with one of these in the house. Okay, you can go now. Thank you for coming. Please come again soon. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I painted one of my latest commissions for Gin Wars. This Gin is called Anya Murad, and she is a proficient strategist. She is shrewd, she is powerful, she is inflexible and stubborn. Apparently, she favours elegant gowns and summer dresses, but that is not to fool you into thinking she is not the tank that she already is. For once she straps on that armor, she will wreck house with extreme prejudice, giving no pause or quarter until the battle is won. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I painted this statue sculpted by TD Saber. You can find links to both of these people in my description below. Make sure if you like the video, pop a like, leave a comment. Let's see if we can get this video to a hundred likes. And so now for the painting of this wonderful model. It's starting to become a bit of a ritual where I keep telling you, I start with a black base. This is the Prama. Also, I like to dust my models before I start painting them because even though you painted them yesterday, there still could be dust settled on them today. I start off the skins like I start all my skins on light skin tone models. I use the same procedure and there is a link that you can see to a video where I discussed how I paint skin tones in the top corner right now. This is a tried and tested technique that I use to paint all my skin tones and I've been using this for most of my modeling career since I've figured it out. With most models like this, I tend to keep the lighting quite simple and I bring it from the top, which is basically called a zenithal. A zenithal highlight means that the light comes from the top, so it's some fancy language. It meant that the sun came from the top and because of that it was a zenithal. The zenith of the sun was at the top and because of that in a fancy language that is why we call it a zenithal. That's exactly the true scientific facts about a zenithal. You'll notice I will paint from the bottom as well, but when I'm painting from the bottom, I'm just adding more of the darker tones or trying to get into gaps. I kept the skirt on while I did the highlights in order to make sure that the shadows fell in the correct places. It's almost like cheating, but it's not cheating because the skirt's going to be there anyway. The way I treat painting skin is I tend to build it up. Skin is made up of multiple different colors. Ideally, there should be greens, there should be blues, there should be pinks, purples, orange, yellows. However, there's no ways I'm going to sit and paint that many colors into something. So I find if I do multiple layers, this helps to build a lot of color into the skin. And then I can use a glaze to try and bring out some of the redness and blood underneath the surface of the skin. For the dress, I started painting with a blue. I'm using the new Army Painter airbrush paints for this. And for the shin guards, I'm going to start off with a brush and I'm just going to brush a metallic blue on it. It's called actually Elven Armor and it's also from an Army Painter airbrush set. There's nothing really to this, just painted on as... This is going to form the base for those shin guards. I then came back and added some shadows into the dress. And then I painted the base coats onto her hips. She's wearing these like swimming shorts. I wanted to try and make like a fishy scale kind of color so I used a color shifting color and I mixed that color shifting color with psychic shock and that color shift color was storm surge green from green stuff world using purple from Vallejo model color I then base coated the entire shorts I spent my time making sure that I didn't go over the parts that I had originally painted. This is a fairly straightforward part of the paint job, but making sure to layer those layers up so that the saturation is as full as it can possibly be. 
and you'll notice I will I will put multiple layers on. Multiple layers is the key to success for when you want to get a solid saturation without any texture from the paintbrush. As you can see, I'm totally layering as many layers as I can to make sure that that saturation is as fully saturated as it can possibly be. I then base coated her hair and because she's got a white hair, I started off with a slightly off white, like almost yellow in a way. This was going to be a good base for the hair. Now working on the base for this model. I used the same metallic blue, which is elven armor, and I mixed that with a bit of the color shift paint. And I then sprayed that all over the base. I made sure this was a solid uniform coat. Again, multiple layers is your friend in this situation. Let it dry in between coats and layer it again. I find airbrushing metallic paints gives you a much better, smoother finish. Also, the paints tend to look shinier when you airbrush them. I then took bronze from the ProCool range and I then base coated all the trimming, at least all the major trimming around the base of this model. There was a lot of trimming on this model and it takes a while and takes a bit of patience so the best thing I can say is when you're working on stuff like this try not to let it overwhelm you rather just put something on TV to watch perhaps you want to watch a ground affected video or any of the other amazing painters and model builders that you find on YouTube. Once you've got yourself comfortable it's easy to sit back with a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and just take your time there's nothing really difficult about doing this, it's all about patience, taking your time, making sure that you get the paint on the right spot every single time. I have my phone playing YouTube videos and I keep an earphone in. You might notice that in a lot of my videos I have my earphone in, that's because I'm recording and I'm painting in between recording and I usually have my earphones in so that I can watch YouTube videos and not disturb everyone else in the house with my boring videos about how to paint things or how this guy built another thing or how many how many times you need to put layers over a coat to make it a solid saturated color the colors that you see here were painted straight on with the brush i didn't use the airbrush or masking or anything for that I didn't record that section because I forgot to press record, but I recorded all of the trimming. So I had to cut out quite a bit of this trimming because there is a lot of trim on this armor. And so basically this is just me going in with bronze and I'm just base coating all of that. I later came back with copper and rich gold and I mixed the two together to create a highlight on that bronze, which actually I'm calling it a gold, I know it's bronze, but it looks gold on the model, that's because I used the bronze as the base coat and the gold as the highlight tricking your eye to make it look like it's gold. Just make sure you have something to occupy your brain with because doing trimming is not exactly a difficult thing to do and it's not a hard brain functioning thing to do i tend to take a lot of breaks when i do pieces like this with a lot of trimming on it just because i feel like my brain starts to slow down and i start making more mistakes the more bored my hands get if that makes any sense the best thing you can do is just stand up walk away from it or in my case what i did is i had a couple of small space marines next to my table and every time I felt like I was losing my concentration, I'd pick up the Space Marine and continue to paint onto the Space Marine. It's a good way of keeping your hands and your brain and your eyes and everything refreshed and up to par. You're working to a certain standard, you wanna make sure you maintain that standard. So when you start losing concentration and you start becoming bored with a tedious task that's repetitive, it's, easy, it's best for you to just step away from the situation and do something that makes your hands and your brain and everything come back to task again that way you stop making your silly mistakes and it doesn't cost you as much time doing that i'm pretty happy with how the base came out um i wish that i had have changed the blue but i'm still happy with how the blue looks it does contrast very nicely against the wave 
that is on the bottom of the space. Here you can see me adding that highlight to the gold. Like I said, I mix copper and rich gold from Pro Acryl. Uh, the Pro Acryl metallic range is a really great paint. It goes on very nicely. I don't really enjoy many metallic paints. I'm not gonna lie, but the bronze from Pro Acryl works extremely well. It the coverage is incredibly amazing. However, the rich gold and the copper. To be fair, the copper is a pretty good coverage. Rich gold is pretty much like most gold metallic paints. It goes down, but it's a slight bit streaky because you have to put it on quite thick and building layers doesn't tend to work very much, um, especially with a metallic paint like this. You want to try not to build too many layers. It's best to get the paint on in one coverage in order to get the best look out of the metallic paint. But sometimes that doesn't work in your favor and you have to do a couple of layers. But doing it this way with the bronze as the base coat and copper and the rich gold i put the copper into the rich gold because this helps the rich gold hold and have more strength for coverage as the copper itself is a better coverage color so i placed it into the gold in order to help the gold cover if that makes any sense and again i'm just watching stuff in the background taking my time i had a few breaks in between this um doing gold trim or any kind of trim that is repetitive task it honestly it can kill you, but the outcome of something as complicated and as technical as this is really incredible. It always looks amazing. You don't even have to be too neat or too tidy. You just have to make sure you're roughly on that trimming and you're not too much off of the trimming and it will always look great. The contrast between that blue and I've used a really dark deep blue and that sort of orangey coppery kind of color, it's technically a complementary color to each other so almost in a way it it helps each color stand off of each other color god damn that's a mouthful it's okay they understand maybe i shouldn't have kept as much trim footage in the video it's okay you should suffer through my pain of doing all this trimming as well actually I probably should slow it down and make you watch it in full speed. This is sped up at six times, by the way. So what ultimately was four or five hours worth of trim has been brought down to a couple of minutes in this video. I did switch between brush sizes. I started out with a size one and a size three are the two brushes that I started off with. And then I used my small triple zero and my quadruple zero to catch some of the smaller pieces, especially around her neck. This is me dry brushing her hair. As I said, an off white as a base tone and then a pure white just over the top as a dry brush would bring out the hair really nicely. And then going back in with the white and a paintbrush, because one of the things about white is that the more you add, the more you find out the white that was there is not actually white enough. So I always come back and add and it helps to hide the chalky bits. I then had to have dinner and I figured you'd want to see me have dinner. So I put that in the video. After my dinner, I went straight back to gold trimming again. And this is something that you will see me. I will alternate between trimming and doing other parts than trimming and doing other parts. Again, like I said, in between that, I worked on other skills like painting the Space Marines, which you can find the video in the top corner right now. And this shows you a technique that I had worked on. I then worked on three different techniques and practiced certain skills that I wouldn't be learning by doing a commission like this. When you're working on pieces for other people, I don't personally, I don't tend to experiment. I've heard a lot of painters say how they enjoy experimenting on pieces that are not for themselves. But for me, I'm selling something to someone I need them to know that the product they're going to buy is the same product they see on all my social medias or all my advertising. The last thing I need to do is give a customer who's expecting a specific standard of work or a specific style of artwork. You don't want to give them something completely different. That's not what they're paying for. They've sought you out or they may have found you on social media or something and they liked your style of artwork and now you're changing your style of artwork when this person wants to buy your style doesn't make any sense to me so i don't experiment 
or play games or do anything weird when I'm doing a commission for someone. I do exactly what I always do and what I know to do best because this is what the people have hired me to do. A really good tip for if you are doing trimming like this and you do find that over time your paints tend to dry out, I constantly add airbrush medium or any kind of paint thinner to your paints depending on the paints that you're using just to help keep the flow consistent. If the flow is working really well, you're not going to struggle. If you're struggling to put paint down, chances are your paint's drying out and you need to add more water, airbrush medium, something. You need to add more medium to your paints to get them to flow a lot better through your brushes. I feel like getting that flow figured out is one of the biggest tricks to not having a headache when you start doing a lot of trimming or a lot of repetitive tasks where you have to do lines or panel lines or lines on a Spider-Man costume or any kind of trimming lines. At the end of the day, if your paint is flowing nicely, it's going to make your job a hell of a lot easier. If it flows too much, of course, that's going to be difficult, but this is where you do a lot of experimenting and figure out what works for you, how much flow you prefer. Not everybody's going to like the same amount of flow. I may prefer the paint to be a little bit looser. And I, the way I look at using paints is that paint is a liquid. So you have the traditional way of controlling the paint on your brush or you can use the fact that it's a liquid and the ball or surface tension that liquids have can be used to your advantage for example using that to make circles or dots perfectly round that's a really easy way to do that by using the surface tension of the liquid of the paint to make a round dot you can use the same concept on trimming so my paintbrush in this instance is quite loaded with paint it's not a dry controlled paint it's a fairly wet paint on my brush I load my brush up with quite a lot of paint because I use a surface tension to grab around the edges of that raised piece of armor and the trimming areas. So using that surface tension helps me to actually create a smoother, consistent line in one pass. If I had to do it in three or four passes, this was four or five hours of trimming. It would then ultimately be 15 to 20 hours of trimming on the exact same thing that took me one third of that time. One of the difficult things about this model is that it had free handed tattoos marked onto it. I'm not sure if they're tattoos or wall painting, but we'll go with tattoos. And basically, again, you want to worry about the consistency of your paint and how the paint is flowing on your brush. The more flowier it is, the easier it is going to be to pull a line that you can then consistently go back to. If it's too thick, it's gonna create texture. And if you create texture, that's gonna be difficult to get rid of and your eye is gonna be drawn to it. If it's too thin, it's gonna create patches and you will have to put multiple layers. And if you're doing something precise as a tattoo or like an armband around an arm, the last thing you wanna do is do that in three or four layers because that means you have to be that accurate three or four times. And in my opinion, if you get it done right the first time, don't go back to it because you've got it straight. Don't freaking cock it up now. You, if you go back, you always tend to make a mistake and it, that's the worst thing you can do, meaning you have to repaint that entire part. Some of these tattoos were quite awkward in quite awkward places. I had to glue her arms on for this model, mainly because there was a mark where her arms were joined and in order to if I had to stick those arms dry with no glue in between or any filling, it would be very noticeable that she had her arms joined to her. So I, I opted in this case to glue her arms on, fill the gaps and sand it as smooth as I could. I took my time. In my real life, I'm actually a tattoo artist. So I know a lot about body placement and how these things work on your body. So this obviously helped me place these tattoos specifically on the body. There's nothing to it though, there's no difference painting a tattoo on this body than painting a symbol on a cape or on an arm or a coat or on the arm of a space marine or something like that. It's the same concept. Again, like I said, I use different, I use multiple size brushes. Mainly I get the main shape down and then I'll come back in with a smaller brush and tidy up the points, for example, 
uh, one of the most important things in tattooing is have the points as sharp as possible, specifically on tribal style tattoos. Here you can see me come back with the gold trim and I'm just doing the highlights again and this is on the arms this time. I'd moved away from that because obviously again like I said it's very monotonous doing gold trim on something so I'd moved away and I started to challenge myself by doing the tattoos on her body instead and now I've come back again to doing the trimming. You'll notice I'm wearing a glove and at this point we're in a position where there is a lot of edges on this model. On a smoother model you can get away with just holding it in your hand. However with a model like this where those edges protrude, when your hand is holding it, your hands have oils in them and those oils break down the acrylic paint. So you may find you might be painting something and after you've done hours of trimming, you come back and you look and you say, hang on, I thought I'd painted that section but there is no paint on it. That's because the oils in your hands have rubbed it completely off. So I tend sometimes to use a glove on one hand just so that the oils in my hands don't affect the paints and take them off while I'm working on them. You can obviously get around this by putting a clear coat on, but when you're working on something like this where the gold trim goes over so much of the body, there's no ways I'm gonna clear coat every five or 10 minutes just to make sure that I've blocked in what I've done. So I find it a lot easier just to chuck a glove on and that stops the paint from rubbing off. It was only at this point that I realized that I was so far away that you can't really see what's going on. So you only get a couple of seconds of actually being able to see how the trim looks on this model. Unfortunately, I'm still learning how to make these videos. I'm still learning what works and I'm still learning what you guys like. If there is something that you don't like or something that you would like to see more of, or if there's any kind of suggestion that you have for how you would like me to approach videos like this, especially in the future, I would like to hear your comments down below. Please leave your comments in the bottom. Not only does that tell me what you would like to see, it also helps boost the algorithm. The way YouTube works is that if you interact with the video, it tells YouTube that that video is worth watching. If people watch the video and don't interact, YouTube doesn't push the video any further. And at the end of the day, I feel like the tips and tricks that I'm giving are worth people seeing, it's worth people learning. I've noticed so many people actually gaining knowledge and improving from the tips and tricks that are offered in the video. And it would be really good if we can start offering that to more people. This is how that armor ended up coming out and how the trim looks on her upper body. The last thing that I had to do was just come back and do the last bit of trimming on the hips, which is her swimsuit. And that I basically just used paint from Ammo by Mig and it's called Bluish Titanium, which is a pretty terrible color to use. However, used in thick quantities or on a big blob on the end of my brush, it works out pretty well and it looks really nice against the colors that I have already placed down. I did not thin this paint at all. This paint is already pretty thin and this is one of the reasons why I say I don't particularly like this paint because it is quite thin out the bottle. However, like I said, using the fact that paints are a liquid, I can use that to my advantage and make sure that the paint goes in the places that I want it to go to. It does take practice to learn this. This is something called brush technique. And I'm going to do videos in the future to try and show you exactly how those things work.
Hopefully you guys are enjoying this style of video with a complete model built from beginning to end. If there's something you would like to see me go over specifically or something you maybe want me to elaborate more on, please leave that in the comments below. Once again, if you like the video, make sure to click the thumbs up. If you think your friends need to see it, make sure to share it. Most importantly, if you enjoyed the video, consider giving me a subscriber. Because if you give me one subscriber, I will have one more subscriber. And if you'd like to get involved in our community over on Discord, then make sure to join the Patreon. Links for everything is in the description below. This week, we had one new Patreon, JL Rudit. Thank you for joining, and thank you to everybody else you see on the screen right now. I have some secret surprises for my patrons which I will be releasing in the coming months soon. We're also working on a community paint up project at the moment. This hasn't even stopped any of that. It's going We're also working on a community paint project at the moment. And if you'd like to get involved, make sure to join the Patreon and leave your suggestions before we choose and finalize the design. At the same time, if you'd like to see more videos like this and you'd like to support the channel, the most important thing you can do is leave a like and leave a comment below because your likes and comments interact with the video and push it out to more people on YouTube. The more people that see the videos, the more people we can help with tricks and tips for painting and printing. And once again, there's only one thing I have left to tell you. If you didn't like the video, you can't even dislike because YouTube took that away. So just f off. This is how the internet works, right? Put a cat in your video and you're suddenly famous.